you today. Today we are going to go over something that is bugging a lot of people and you guys ask me all the time. We're going to talk about the differences between quartz and granite. It's a big deal guys. When you guys are choosing your kitchen renovation um, finishes, you're always asking me, should I choose quartz? Should I choose granite? What about marble? What's the best thing? And I always say to you guys, just pick what you love. So when I tell you guys to pick what you love, that answer is definitely not good enough for some of you type A people that want to know the facts. I really will stick by that, but today I'm just going to go ahead and tell you a little bit of the differences and towards the end of the video I'm actually going to show you a stain test. So I actually conducted a stain test here at the DBS offices so you can see how these materials handle stains. First up, let's talk about granite. It's a natural stone, guys. This is just something that God created and is in the earth. They actually just cut pieces out, they get them out, they cut them, polish them, install them in your house. So there's not going to be any two pieces that are exactly the same. They're completely unique. Some of the benefits of granite um, are that they come in larger slabs, and that might not mean anything to you, but when we're doing install, that's a good thing. The less slabs you need to purchase, usually that will cut costs down. So the pieces that we can get of granite are actually larger, covering more space in your kitchen. Granite is also easier to repair. If you drop something on it and it gets a nick out, there's ways that that can be repaired more easily than the other materials. Uh, it's still not optimal, but it can be done. Uh, granite is also something that won't discolor. So when you're placing in a kitchen, if you have um, right under a windowsill or something, the light can affect different stones. Granite typically doesn't get affected by light. With the maintenance for granite though, you are gonna wanna seal this product. Every year, some products are six months, some are a year, and some of the commercial grade products are actually, you can get 10, 15 years. I've actually never used those, but you just wipe it on with a sponge, seal it, and you should be good to go. The one exception to that is black or really dark colored granites. Those actually many times do not have to be sealed. I actually have a black granite in my house right now. Uh, and you can spill anything on it, it's never been discolored. So again, it's just more of um, a dense product, it's less porous, so it really just depends on the color of the granite. Some are super porous, meaning it can absorb liquid more, which will be more prone to staining, similar to marble. So I'm gonna go ahead and lump the um, marble group into the granite group that we're discussing. Is That is a more porous stone, it will need to be sealed, it does uh, react to stains more, so that's something we're gonna keep in mind and you'll see later on in the video. Something to consider with granite though is that it is a natural stone and it actually does gas off, meaning it does release some radon gas. If that's something that might concern you, do some research on that, see what your comfort level is, but again, most people use it, not a big deal, but definitely check out what you think is best for your family. Next up, we'll talk about quartz. Whereas granite is a natural occurring material, quartz is man-made. 93% of the material is crushed up quartz, which is from the earth, which is natural, one of the hardest substances on earth. But the other percentage of it, the 7 to 10%, is binders and plastics to just give it the look and the feel and the sturdiness. The benefits of this material is it's non-porous, so it really does not need to be sealed per most manufacturer's recommendations, which means you can spill stuff on it and it should wipe off easily. We're going to test that a little bit later. A couple of the downsides of quartz are slab size. In a kitchen uh, renovation, we might only need two slabs of granite where we might need three slabs of quartz because quartz comes in smaller slabs. So that might drive your cost up a little bit. Another thing to consider is if you have a lot of windows in your kitchen, meaning direct sunlight where the sun beats in right on the counter, you may get some discoloration over time. I typically tell people not to worry about that because the time length that it takes for that to happen um, is pretty substantial, again, unless you're sitting right under a window. You may get some yellowing of the different lighter colored quartz. But again, not a huge deal breaker, but just something for you guys to be aware of. With quartz, you also wanna be a little more gentle with heat that you put on it. If you put something super hot, say you had a cast iron skillet and you place it directly on your countertops, you are running the risk of either a burn or a discoloration or even some melting hazing. Not melting like it's gonna melt like a candle, but it might make the finish less um, shiny and lustrous. So you definitely have to be careful. Most of the quartz products are rated for 150 to 400 degrees heat. Uh, I did see somebody place a 600 degree pot on a countertop and it cracked and I'm like, okay, of course, you know, that's kind of the extreme stuff. If you're just running a normal kitchen, you're not typically going to be doing that, but it's always safest with granite and quartz to go ahead and put a hot mat under your hot items if you're placing them on the counter. Okay, so now let's have some fun with the information that we just learned. I wanted to put some of these facts to the test. So last night, I went ahead and poured some red wine and some tomato sauce on different samples of granite and quartz. So after letting it dry overnight, let's wipe it off and see what happens. All right, so these were all stained last night. I went ahead and poured on the red wine and the tomato sauce. And if you see here, I have six samples that we're going to look at, see what happens. 
The top row here that you see is all the quartz products. I got you a couple different finishes, a couple different colors. The bottom row is the granite. Again, a couple different finishes, a couple different colors, just so you guys see exactly what will happen with these stains. All right, first up, we're gonna wipe it off of a leathered finished granite. We use that finish a lot, so let's see what the reaction is. So as you see, this one actually wiped off completely. If you look, you see some darker um, spots here, but that's just because this is a porous material, so some of the water did absorb, but it hasn't stained the material at all. So the leathered finish in the darker, this is actually a steel gray leather, this one did not stain. Sealer would still be good for that, but again, this is a good job, no stain. Next up, we're gonna wipe off a slightly more porous piece of granite. This one will also mimic a marble, so you can also consider this in the marble family, how the reaction will be similar. As you see, this one did not do so well, but please remember these have not been sealed. I'm just showing you what it looks like in its raw state. But the tomato sauce completely wiped off. There's not any stain, anything there, which is a good sign. The red wine though soaked right in. It was almost completely dry. The stone absorbed it all. If this happens, there's ways to get cleans and repairs um, from the fabricators and installers. I don't know if they could fully get this out, but there's ways to make it better, but ugh, no bueno. Last up in the granite category, I'm going to do one that's sort of medium porous. So let's see how this one reacts. So as you see, this one fared pretty well. Tomato sauce did not soak in at all. There's nothing there. The red line has just the slightest bit of a tint. If you see right there, there's a bit of a purple staining. Again, I'm just using water. So even with some soap, I think you could get more of this out. So this one handled pretty well. Again, not sealed, medium porous, little bit of stain. We're doing good so far. So for quartz, I'm just gonna do them all at the same time. Since these guys say you shouldn't have to seal their product, let's go ahead and see how it looks. When it's sort of matte finish kind of, it's just not as shiny as the others. Yep, nothing there. You can take a close look, not a bit of stain. Next up is sort of a Carrera look that everybody's loving. Look guys, nothing left. It's pretty good, don't see anything there. Well, actually I might seal, well, no, I think I just need some soap. So this one is good too. Then lastly is just the pure white, which you think this would have the most um, opportunity to stain. So let's check it out. All the way clean, guys. How awesome is that? So they actually are correct. You don't need to seal your quartz and it's stain free. But let me just say, if you're leaving tomato sauce and wine all over your counters for an extended period of time, that's kind of gross. Just clean your stuff, people. So hopefully now you guys know the difference a little bit more between quartz and granite. Next time you ask me, which one should I choose? I'm still gonna say the same thing, guys. Choose what you love, choose what looks best for the design, and just take care of your stuff. If you seal it, do proper maintenance, they're all beautiful options. Just some have a little more things you gotta watch out for. So that's it, we'll see you later.